thing about this crusade tonight in the Colosseum is that we are gathered together from many different racial and ethnic backgrounds to affirm that Jesus Christ is Lord. And here on the platform are pastors and leaders representative of the broad Christian leadership of this community, and we are here to proclaim the gospel and to share his love. Dr. Raimundo Hermenes, who is the director of the Hispanic Christian Network, will lead us in prayer. May I ask you all to stand and join in prayer beseeching the Lord for his divine anointing tonight. Let us pray. Lord, when the Hispanic founders of this city established it, they called it the city of the angels. Very few areas in the world have as many names of cities and towns with names of saints and religious names. But the enemy has tried to convert this city in the, in the world city of sin, degradation, rebellion, immorality. The disasters and the crisis of the last three years remind us that there is a continuous battle between the forces of evil and the forces of good trying to take possession over this city. Racial division, hatred, Sin is abounding, but tonight, in the name of Jesus, we reclaim Los Angeles for Jesus. We proclaim the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you would unite every nationality, every tongue, every race in this city, your people from all over the world that are gathered here in your name. May we proclaim the message of love and reconciliation, and may we proclaim Los Angeles for the Lord. Lord, we pray for a special anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your servant Christopherson, and that many souls may be won into the kingdom of God. Shake this city by your power, O oh God. In the name of Jesus! We would like to sing this called Shine, Jesus, Shine. Fill this land, not just this land, but Los Angeles. Amen? With the Father's glory. And we're asking him to blaze, spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire. And ask him to flood our land with the righteousness of our God. For he desires to do wonderful things in Los Angeles. Amen? And we're so happy we get to be a part of this. Let's begin by singing Shine Jesus Shine.
to shine over Los Angeles and let his glory fill this city and fill this place. Let's sing it again. Shine, shine. One who is all three things to me. He's my father, my brother, and my friend in Christ, Evie Hill of the Mount Zion Baptist Church, one of the great people of our time. Evie Hill. Thank you, Dr. Algovy. Let us pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we would ask of you to especially bless us to speak these words, and especially bless Dr. Christopher Son to preach the word and save tonight, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Now the good news that God hath reconciled us unto himself through Jesus Christ is overshadowed in Los Angeles by the fact that those have been reconciled are not reconciling. Those that have been saved are not seeking to save. Those who have been brought into the family of God seemingly have no energy to go out and bring others into the very family of God. We are busy grouping ourselves. Los Angeles, the city of angels, though lost they may be, needs ministers of reconciliation. And it was because of that that I flew in from Florida to get here tonight in order that I can stand shoulder to shoulder with my brother Christopher Son, Lord Algovy, and the rest of them whose skin is not as pretty and brown as mine. Because I am a minister of reconciliation. It is more popular to be a minister of segregation But our Lord has called us to be ministers of reconciliation. My fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, it is time for all of us to join hands and encircle Los Angeles and come together that the lost may be found. before they die, and God grant it will begin tonight.
Let's pray. O most gracious and loving God, we thank you for making it possible to start this wonderful crusade tonight in this magnificent Colosseum, in spite of the earthquake damages. O oh Lord, as we begin this crusade, please help us to focus our hearts on you and to be fully reconciled with you. Help us to examine ourselves carefully and to love one another regardless of our different ethnic background. Also help us to give attention to what we do with our financial blessings and to be cheerful givers and faithful managers. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless our solemn rededication and sanctify our love offerings so that the spirit of this wonderful crusade can be carried on till all people will truly receive and rejoice in peace and love that you graciously give to us. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Well, all, all our sins and our grief he bears. to carry everything to God. Every period of history, God has placed his hand on people to communicate his love and power. And in our time of history, to reach out and touch people from all different backgrounds and ethnic groups, God has placed his hand on Dr. Christopher Sun, 
His crusades throughout the world thus far have been blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's done nine of them in Taiwan, one at the Anaheim Convention Center, in Vancouver, in San Jose, Sydney, Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, and God is using him mightily. On your bulletin, you will see a picture of Dr. Sun. He's praying. I've never known a Christian leader who is more intent on prayer and dependence upon the Holy Spirit. He trusts completely. And now all the power of our living Lord, focused for you and me, is going to be channeled through him as he speaks to us of the glory of our Lord, of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray for him now that God will use him to speak to your mind and heart. God bless you, Dr. Sun. Good evening, brother and sister. Let's all rise and give all the glory on the power of Lord Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit are comforted. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It has been 31 years we didn't have any crusade here. Praise God. Give him all the glory on the power. Thank you. Please be seated. Please turn with me to the book of Rome, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. The book of Rome, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Paul said, therefore I urge you, brothers, In urge of God's mercy, I offer your body as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and the perfect will. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each one of us has one body with many members, and this member do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body. And each member belong to all the others. Tonight, the message will be being used by God and overcome temptation. being used by God to overcome temptation. Let's bow our head and pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit, our Comforter, we ask your Spirit move here freely. Open our hearts, open our ears, open our eyes, open our minds. 
Let every one of us be saved and be multiplied in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, we live in a generation filled with all kinds of medias. We have television, we have computer, even all kinds of amusement. In comparison with 1963, during the 31 years, we have great change. We witnessed a tremendous technological transformation that have taken place. A lot of people live in our community, they don't have any dreams. We lost our vision. We even lost our hope. A lot of us don't know how to control our future. Decision. The Bible tells us every night we have to decide ourselves to live for God. A matter of fact, every morning we wake up, a lot of things we have to make a decision. We have to decide what kind of newspaper we read and what kind of lifestyle we are going to live. But God Bible tells us we should sanctify us to live a holy life for God. I must tell you, without God's help, none of us here tonight can live a sanctified life in this generation. Because Satan, the devil, he knows his time is near. He also know in the book of Revelation chapter 20, it clearly indicates he will be bound and thrown into the lake of fire. So before the coming judgment of Jesus Christ, he's going to pour out, spread out all kind of temptation, enticement, frustration to the whole world. Young men and young lady, whether you are old or young, every one of us, we tempted by Satan. Without the protection of Lord Jesus Christ, none of us here tonight can live a holy life. In order to live a holy life, the secret that Paul tells us in the Bible, He said to the Corinthian, he said, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. In other words, when the temptation comes, you have the right to say no to temptation. No to drug. No to violence. No to temptation. Because we are the children of light. And God gives this authority to every one of us here tonight. Because Jesus said, you are the light of this world. A city on the hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bow. Instead, they put it on his stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven.
That's reason why we gather here. Walk from behind the walls of the church, come to the Colosseum. We have to live a life for Jesus Christ. This evening, I'm going to share with you the five steps and the five secrets how to overcome temptation and being used by God. First, we must decide to live a sanctified life. And the Bible tells us Joseph decided to live a sanctified life and this decision changed history. When Joseph was young, he refused to do evil things with his brothers. So his brother sold him to Egypt. And uh, Joseph was bought by the hand of the captain of the guard of the pharaohs. Even in that situation, God blessed Joseph. So his master see the Lord blessing, so give him charge of everything he touched. But Joseph was young, he's a strong, and he's a handsome boy. And just at this moment, his master and wife loved Joseph. So she enticed Joseph daily. But Joseph, he knew the law of God. He knows the intimate relationship outside the marriage is a sin and against the law of God. So Joseph said no. His situation may be like some of you here tonight. You are away from your home country, from your large town to the city of Los Angeles. Whether you are a man or a lady, but God know you. Just like uh, Joseph's master's wife always tempt Joseph, but Joseph always say no. You know that's why recent Paul warned Timothy. He said, flee the evil desire of youth and uh, pursue the righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Paul said, you have to along with those who call on the Lord out of pure heart. Why do I say this? Because Satan always uses sinful desire to totally destroy the promise and the blessing of God. Satan wants to stop the blessing of God toward Joseph. One day, Joseph went into the house to attend his duty. No one was there. And Joseph's master wife caught Joseph's coat, tried to entice him. Joseph feel the temptation is so strong, so he ran out of the house and left his cloak behind. Yes, Joseph was false accused. He was put into prison. He was experiencing suffering. But God's eye look upon this integrity young man. So in a chance opportunity, God allowed Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to took Joseph out of prison. And 
and appoint Joseph to be the prime minister of the whole country. Pharaoh even tell Joseph, he said, I hereby appoint you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Without your word, no one will leave hand or foot in the whole Egypt. Because Joseph said no, this no changed history. Joseph did, and so can you tonight. If you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, he will give you strength and the power to overcome temptation. He will lead you to the Joseph of this generation. One day you will become the Joseph of our country. And we need for Christ in our history. Because the proverb, the Bible promise, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has gone, the new has come. Tonight, believe in Jesus Christ, you will become a new person. 2nd why is used by God? He must be a humble person. Because in the Bible, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Yet in the Bible, there is one such a man. His name is Moses. He's a humble person. The Bible in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, point out Moses was a very humble man. More humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. But this humble man, he become to become the vessel of God. Because in the book of Hebrew, he tells us, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of a Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Yes, Joseph is the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter. Historians like Josephus even point out Joseph might could be the great pharaoh in the future. Yes, he was a great prince and a great general of the army. All the wealth, all the money and the enjoyments were lay before him. But Moses come to a certain point of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to suffer, suffer with his own people. Because Moses knows the joy and the pleasure of this world will soon be gone. But those who does the will of God will last forever and ever and ever. Because Moses made his mind, let him become a great man of God in the Old Testament. To the sins of this world, he said no. 
But to God, our Lord, he said, yes, I will follow you. I would like to believe in you forever. Therefore, God appointed Moses, lead all his people out of the bondage and lead toward the promised land. Tonight, if you accept Jesus as your personal savior, God going to change your heart, change your destiny. Let you become the Moses of this generation. Lead the people from bondage. Lead the people out of oppression. Lead the people out of despair. Because he is going to use every one of us. As long as we want to say, Lord, I'm here, I would like to follow you. Thirdly, one who is used by God, he must be a person of purity and the discipline. That reason why Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see the kingdom of God. There was a, such a young man, his name is Daniel. When he was young, he was captured and sent to Babylon. He was afraid from home. He never thought about one day he will come back to his home country. But God knows this young man and his three friends. Because when Daniel was young, he made his mind whatsoever the price will be, but he would be faithful to God to the end. When people gave Daniel and his three friends the good wine and good food, he refused it. Daniel said, a simple food, is that enough? He said, because I want to live for God. And even he began to pray three times a day. Because he knows the secret of a power hide in the prayer. Because the Bible said, not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Not even just because he praying every day. When he was old, we were falsely accused to send into the den of lion. But in the den of lion, he's still praying. So God sent angel to seal the mouth of the lion. Finally, Daniel was rescued by the king of Persian and meat. Daniel didn't compromise with his road, but he faithfully believed the Lord. He took the hand of God. So God raised him from the dust of slavery. Let Daniel become the two countries' prime minister. Because then you decide to live a simple life. So God used him mightily. If Daniel can do it, so can you tonight. Believe in Jesus Christ, change your life. You ask yourself, how can I define myself? Is there any way I can define myself? 
A matter of fact, the Bible tells us to flee from all kind of fornication. Escape anything might defile our thoughts, our mind. A lot of people indulge yourself in all kind of joy and all kind of pleasure in this world. Some even take drugs or even do forbidden things. All this will defy a person. Just like a certain rich person. He had a great crop and a lot of property in his hand. And one day he said to himself, I would like to tear down all my barn and build a bigger one to store all my crop and the property, all kinds of goods. He said, then I will say to my soul, so take ease, easy, be merry. You have all kinds of store, all kinds of for, for many, for many years. But that evening, God told him. He said, you fool. Tonight, your soul will be demand from you. Who will get what you have prepared for yourself? There was a great king in the history. His name is Alexander the Great. He conquered most part of the world. But when he died, he died with two empty hands. Jesus said, what good will it be for a man if he gained the whole world but lose his own soul? Because Daniel said no to temptation, God used him to change the history. Tonight, if you believe in Jesus, God are going to use you. Let you to change the history for the glory of God. Fourthly, if one be used by God, he must be a person of faithfulness. In the Bible, the prophet Elijah, he's a man of God of faithfulness. He's also a man of faith. His country was weak and powerless. There was neither rain nor dew in the past three and a half years. All kind of difficulty and suffering, just like our Los Angeles. But God told him, he said, go to present yourself to King Ahab, because I'm going to send rain to cover the whole land. So Prophet Elijah faithfully be there. He gathered all people to rebuild the altar of God. He used 12 different shapes of stone to rebuild the altar of God, just like every one of us rebuild the altar of God in Los Angeles, here in LA Memorial Coliseum. God called you to come to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And when Prophet Elijah prepared everything and the offering, <laughs> Prophet Elijah began to pray, and then suddenly the fire of God came down from heaven. <laughs> then all people know the Lord is God. <laughs> but his mission has now accomplished. Yes, we should have revival in the church. 
but God called you because you have to pray for the Lord for the latter rain to cover a whole Los Angeles and the city and our nation and the world. But this is even more difficult than praying the fire God can come from heaven. <laughs> Prophet Elijah, he prayed seven times. <laughs> that reason why I ask you to have a faith in Jesus Christ. <laughs> because Jesus said everything is possible for him who believes. Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Yes, we do have a difficulty and a problem in Los Angeles, like a mountain ahead of us. Jesus said, if you have faith as more and mustard see, you can say this mountain, move from here to there, it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Do you want to be a man like Prophet Elijah to win equal fights in this generation? <laughs> By the power of God, he can do it. So can you tonight. <laughs> Don't like the seven thousand prophets, they hide behind the wall, but just like Prophet Elijah, stand up like a lamb in the city of Los Angeles. Pray God so that the city will transform back to the city of angel, the city of reconciliation, the city of God, and the city of peace. Fifthly, he who is being a saving sacrifice, he must be a person follow the will of our Lord. <laughs> our Lord Jesus Christ is the best and the perfect example for every one of us. <laughs> when our Lord Jesus Christ was hung on that rocky cross, Two robbers was crucified on the side of Jesus Christ. And a lot of people shake their head and hurl insult to our Lord Jesus Christ. They say, you call yourself the Son of God. Why don't you come down to the cross and prove you are son of God? If you come down, we will believe you are son of God. The temptation is so great. But our Lord Jesus Christ would rather stay there on that rocky cross for our pride to cover our things. Yes, there is a pain. Yes, there is a suffering. Yes, there are tears. But Lord Jesus Christ, his heart filled with joy because he followed the will of our Heavenly Father. He knows by crucifying on the cross, all our sins will be totally forgiven. Because of love, when Jesus was hung on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. <laughs> this prayer is for every one of us, every ethnic group on this earth. <laughs> Once you believe in Jesus Christ, he will took upon all our sins and the transgression upon that rocky cross. So that all our sins are totally forgiven. 
because of love. When one robber crucified beside Jesus, he repented on the cross. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him. I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Today, not tomorrow. When you receive Jesus Christ, your name will be written in the book of life in heaven. You will have everlasting life. Because of love, he told his beloved apostle John. He handed the responsibility of Jesus' mother to his apostle John. He said to his mother, he said, Dear lady, here is your son. And to John, he said, Here is your mother. So uh, the Apostle John began to take Jesus' mother to his home to take care of her. Even on the cross, he showed we should respect for our parents, our father and mother. Tonight, when you receive Jesus Christ, when you go home, just tell your father and mother, tell them, father and mother, I am reborn again. I become a new child for you. Tonight, Receive Jesus as your personal Savior. He will change your life. Because Allah, He cried on the cross for our sake. He said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At this moment, He bore all our sin upon Himself. He cried out for you. For you, for you, every one of us. Some of you, you cry out, Lord, where are you? But the Lord knows you. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to set you in free. Tonight, receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You will have a totally new life. Because of love, He will only become poor. And on that cross, He said, I'm thirsty. Just like you, you cannot find any fulfillment or satisfied in this desert of this world. But tonight, when you receive Jesus Christ, He are going to give you a living water. He said, whoever drink this water will never thirst. Receive Jesus Christ tonight. He will give you total satisfaction because of love. Jesus hung on another rock crooked cross. He cried out, he said, he did finish. Yes, he did finish. All price have been paid off. All your sins and the transgression. Even you yourself cannot forgive you. But tonight, Jesus Christ are going to totally forgive you. Give you new life. Because of love, Jesus cried out on that large cross. He said, Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. Then Jesus died on that cross. For you, for every one of us, for me. 
Do you know the greatest tragedy of this world is not property? The greatest tragedy of this world is our soul, our spirit come from our Lord. But a lot of us deny Lord Jesus Christ, reject Him. So after they die, their soul, their spirit cannot go to heaven. Instead, they have to go to hell to have eternal suffering. But tonight, when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your name will be written in the book of life in heaven. You can say to our Heavenly Father, say, Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home tonight. The cross is greatest victory in this world. All the problems of this world, including Los Angeles, can only be solved by the cross, the salvation of God. That reason why on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He will return to judge the whole world. Tonight, you have to make decision to change your life, change your destiny. Not only change your life, but that by through you, God may use you to change the destiny of our nation. Through you, our people might be blessed by God. That reason why the Bible promised. He said, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. You see there, ask yourself, are you Jesus Christ's disciple? Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you experienced the love of Jesus Christ? Do you have the authority of the children of God? Before Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Tonight, he wants to give you the authority of the children of God to everyone who believe in him. Let you have victory in your life. Some of you still live in oppression and despair. Tonight, take hold hand of God. Change your life. Change your history. Change your destiny. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I'm going to invite you to come in the front to say, Lord, I would like to receive you as my personal Savior. I want to have victory in my life. I want to have my life change. I can tell many stories and the testimony, but the only one is depends upon your decision. And this decision you have to make tonight. Maybe this is your last opportunity in your life. 31 years is not a short time. Do not wait until another 31 years pass to receive Jesus. Tonight, to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let's bow our head and pray together. The Holy Spirit is talking to you tonight. You know the Spirit talked to you. 
you need Jesus Christ tonight to change your life, to change your history and the destiny. Come forward to receive Jesus Christ tonight. We wait for you. Advisor, Chairman of this committee, please stand with me. We are going to pray together. Thank you. This prayer is directed to our Lord Jesus Christ. Please repeat after me. Let's all bow our heads and pray together. Let's pray together. Please repeat after me. Dear Jesus, our Heavenly Father, thus Holy Spirit, our Comforter, we come to you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Please forgive my sins and the transgressions. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus died on the cross just for me. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He will return to judge the whole world. Because of this, I can have everlasting life. I receive peace and the joy. Thank you, Jesus. You promise in the Bible, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I will be saved. Therefore, I'm saved today. My name has written in the book of life. I will have everlasting life. 
I will have the authority of children of God. Thank you, Jesus. Please give me strength and the power wherever I testify for you. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gloria to Dios. Thank Thank you, Jesus. Now we are going to pray together for Los Angeles and our family and the church. Let's all stand up, please. Let's hand in hand and pray together. Pray for Los Angeles. Pray for your church. Pray for your family. Pray for your marriage. Let the God, our Lord Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit transform the city back to the city of angels, back to the city of reconciliation. Let's pray together. And I'm going to ask Dr. Hill and Dr. Noel Govey to lead in prayer. Let's pray together. Our gracious and heavenly Father, do it, do it, do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. We repent. We acknowledge our shortness. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Again. Again, Lord. Again. Do it again, Lord. Cleanse us, restore us, refresh us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do it again, Lord. And Lord, what you have done in our lives, we pray for everyone in our city. We ask you to bring them here to the crusade that they may receive you as Lord and Savior. We bless you and praise you for what you are doing in our city here tonight and throughout these days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all together sing hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give all the glory to you. Hallelujah. Transform the city back to city angel. Let the people be reconciled, Lord. We belong to one body of Christ. We give all the glory and the power to you one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let people be saved. Hallelujah. Life be transformed and receive Jesus. Change their destiny and their life, Lord. People here, Los Angeles. Let people call the city of angels, city of reconciliation. We give all the glory and the power to you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. We give all the glory, power, and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now, Dr. Jack Hayford from the Church on the Way will give our benediction. We have been together at the beginning of the rebuilding of an altar in the center of Los Angeles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Father God, we go from this place mindful that you have this night started something at the center of our city that will spread like spiritual shock waves until the darkness is completely shattered and scattered and the glory of the Lord freshly visits our city. And now, Father, on the grounds of your word, we go from this place committed unto you who are able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before your throne with exceeding joy. Unto you, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and dominion, now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you. And you're dismissed. Good night.